In this video we show how developers can uh, take control of the population of uh, a list control with their own code. So uh, you can see here we have a, a simple uh, UX component here with a list control and then a drop down box and what we'd like to do is uh, when we make a selection from the drop down box make an Ajax callback query a SQL database uh, to get uh, a result set and then use that result set to populate this list control. So you can see there every time we go ahead here and make a change in the drop down box we have a Ajax callback that repopulates the list. If we go and look at this in uh, Firefox and we examine the network traffic over here we can see when we go for example and select the UK um, we can look at our uh, post so this is the uh, Ajax callback that took place over here and we can see that uh, what we sent back is the name of the country that we would like to uh, populate the um, uh, the list with so um, um, basically we should see country equals UK somewhere in the uh, um, uh, post data and then if we look at our response you can see that in our response we've sent back the the JSON data with which we want to populate the list and then we've called the uh, populate method. So let's go now and take a look at this in detail. So going back to the component we can see that what we have over here is a uh, drop down box. In this case we've just put uh, uh, some static choices and then in the on change event of the drop down box we're calling um, an H we're doing an Ajax callback and we're calling an X basic function called populate list. So let's go now and take a look at populate list. So here we go to our X basic functions and here's uh, populate list. So you can see what we're doing in the uh, populate list function is um, getting a uh, c uh, SQL connection object and then we're opening the connection um, and we're using the uh, Northwind uh, sample database right now if we get an error when we open the connection we just send back an alert saying that we couldn't open up the connection then you can see we've got a SQL statement over here that uh, defines the query that we'd like to execute and then in the uh, SQL statement we're saying where country equals and we're using a uh, an argument uh, ne next we go, s we go and we actually create the uh, SQL argument object and we create an argument called what country and we set the value of what country to e dot data submitted country so that means that when the Ajax callback takes place the current value that is in that drop down box will be used to populate this argument then we go ahead here and uh, we execute the query if the query failed we'll just send back an alert so after the query executes we get a result set so um, um, so we basically get the result set from the um, uh, connection dot result set and then we call the result sets to JSON object syntax method so that basically creates a CRLF delimited string of uh, uh, JSON objects um, but we need to um, since we want an array of JSON objects we need to put a comma after each um, entry in the list so let's actually debug into this so we can see what's uh, what's happening behind the scenes so we'll go here into working preview and I'll go there and I'll choose Italy so you can see now here we go and uh, now after we call this method and we go look at our JSON at this point we can see that we have a CRLF delimited row of JSON uh, objects but um, um, as mentioned we need a comma after each uh, row because um, we want to put this into an array so we're going to translate all, all uh, CRLFs into comma plus CRLF so after executing that line there you can see that we have a uh, comma after every single line and then what we do is we make sure that uh, if in fact there was a comma after the last line that we want to go and remove that line and then add the opening square bracket and closing square bracket so this is the JSON data that we want to use to populate the list and now we continue uh, in our code here to construct the JavaScript response to send back to the client so let's pause now and pick this up in the next video so we're continuing a video on how to populate a list control dynamically with an Ajax callback that makes a query against the SQL database 
So now that we have this uh, JSON variable here, we're continuing to construct the JavaScript response that's going to be sent back to the client. So the first line here, we just basically uh, execute some JavaScript here that's going to basically get a pointer to the list control. So we're going to use the uh, get control method and get a pointer to the list control called list1 because that's the name of our list control. Then we're going to basically create a JavaScript variable called underbar data that has all of our JSON data in it. So at this point our JavaScript that we're constructing looks like this. There's the first line that gets pointed to the list um, object and then the next line uh, uh, populates the um, the variable underbar data with our JSON data and then on the last line here we actually call the list objects populate method and we populate it with data which is the uh, data that we retrieve from our SQL database and then we send that JavaScript back to the client by setting the XBasic function populate list to the return value over there and then finally we free the result set, delete the result set and close the connection. So uh, go ahead now and run it and what we see is if we close the debugger down that um, we've populated the list now with um, the values for Italy. Now when we initially display the list here you can see that there's no data in the list. So the way the list itself was created was um, we actually went to the list and we said that the um, sorry th that we went to the list and we said that the list is actually based on static data because we just wanted um, a dummy set of fields so we could construct the layout of the list and in the static data we chose the column headings uh, of the data that we would like to use to populate our list with so these are the columns that our SQL query is going to return so we just created a st um, static data w where the first row is the column list and we didn't bother putting any um, real data into the static choices but by creating this in the first row that gave us a list of fields here which we could then use uh, in the list layout to design the actual structure of the list so when we go and we run the component initially the static data here is uh, displayed but there's no actual data we just have our column headings and it's not until we actually go and do our first Ajax callback that we actually um, get to see any data in the list so I'm going to just comment out that debug one statement here and go back now so when we go and make our selection in the list that fires the Ajax callback uh, so on the server now we're doing the query against the SQL database getting the JSON data and then sending back the uh, JavaScript to populate the list so you can see there's UK and then France and so the actual amount of work that is being done is very small and uh, um, therefore it executes very quickly and uh, you can see that the list gets repopulated um, uh, very nicely so uh, using this technique you can take complete control over the data that is displayed in a uh, list control. Thank you very much for watching.